In the previous lesson, we used the flow simulation wizard to set up an internal flow analysis on this pipe. The wizard took care of setting most of the input data required to run the study, such as the unit system, fluid type, and other basic parameters. However, there are still a few more steps we have to take to set up the analysis before it can be run. I'll begin by expanding the input data folder in the flow simulation tree. There are a couple important options here I'd like to show you. The computational domain is shown as a wireframe box enveloping the model and is used to visualize the volume being analyzed. Here we can also set the boundary conditions for this analysis. Boundary conditions are incredibly important. A boundary condition is required to describe what's going on anywhere the fluid enters or exits the system or, more precisely, the computational domain. Boundary conditions can be set as a pressure, mass flow, volume flow, or a velocity. Let's begin with the boundary condition for the inlet fluid flow. I'll right-click on boundary conditions in the tree and select Insert Boundary Condition. This brings up the Boundary Condition Property Manager. The first thing I need to do is select a face. This is the inlet area, but you can see it's covered with a lid. We need to select the face on the inside of the lid. To do this, I'll right-click the lid and choose Select Other, and I can select the inside face behind the solid volume of the lid. For the boundary condition type, I'll choose Flow Openings and set it to Inlet Volume Flow. Under the Flow Parameters, I'll use the normal to face option and enter the volume flow rate to be 0 0.08 meters cubed per second. I'll leave the rest of the properties at the defaults and click OK. When I do, you can see the inlet volume flow boundary condition is listed in the tree. Now we need to set up boundary conditions for each of the two outlets of the pipe. Generally, for this type of analysis, a pressure condition should also be used to define the outlet conditions. If the pressure at each of the outlets is not known, an ambient static pressure condition can be used as the boundary condition across each of the outlet faces, as the fluid will be leaving the system at the outlets. I'll insert another boundary condition and again use Select Other to select the inside face of the outlet. For the type, I'll choose Pressure Openings and select Static Pressure. The thermodynamic parameters below match what we specified in the wizard, but if you need to make changes to the outlet pressure or temperature, you can do so here. I'll click OK to add the boundary condition. Now I'll repeat the procedure for the final outlet. I'll insert a boundary condition Choose Pressure Openings, Static Pressure, and click OK. And all of the boundary conditions for this study are added.